special thanks to Julius Jones from YouTube who says, selling roofs pays way more than adjusting. Does it though? Maybe, maybe not. We're gonna answer that question starting right now. This is Adjuster TV. Hey, it's Matt here with Adjuster TV and for the best tips and tools for getting on the first call list as an independent adjuster, subscribe now. Click on the bell notification so you'll never miss a video. Okay. Let's compare these two jobs. Before we get started, a little disclaimer here. IAs and roof salespeople get paid in more than one way. I sold roofs for a brief time and have chatted with hundreds of roofers about this. And so this is my understanding of how it works. I recognize that there are exceptions and I invite you to share them in the comments. Let's compare the actual work you have to do for each job. So for a cat property IA, number one, get assigned the claim. Number two, call the insurer to set the appointment. Number three, do the inspection, number four, write the estimate, or not, but still get paid if there's no damage. Number five, settle up with the insured, and number six, get paid on the next paycheck, anywhere from 200 bucks to several thousand dollars, depending on the claim. And this is probably all gonna take you about 1.5 hours. Now, what about a roof salesperson? Okay, number one, get leads. This can be done any number of ways, but the main way for a roofer working a hailstorm is to put on his walking shoes and start canvassing. You'll be giving the same spiel that the last five canvassers gave, so you're gonna be seeing a lot of doors closed in your face if you were not the first guy in that neighborhood. Number two, convert as high a percentage as possible of those door knocks into adjust your meetings. Five out of 100, 10 out of 100, 30 or 40 out of 100, maybe if you're a superstar. Number three, meet with the adjuster. And whether there is damage or not, try to convince the adjuster that the roof needs to be replaced. Not saying that every contractor will say that there's damage when there isn't, but it's often our experience as independent adjusters that roofers will say this, even when there's no damage. So you can do this either in a gentle and friendly way or in an aggressive and pushy way. Those are your choices. Number four, if the adjuster agrees that the roof needs replacement, now you have to get a signed contract from the insured. So you gotta sell it, right? Number five, Wait for the insured to get the first check from the insurance company because they might not have the $2,500 deductible just sitting around. And this could be a week or two or three. Number six, then wait for the check to come back from the mortgage company, which could take even more weeks. Number seven, if all goes well and the insured doesn't change their mind and decide to pay off some bills or go to Hawaii instead of replace their roof, you get a check in your hand that you will hand straight over to your boss. If he's cool, he might cut you back a check for a third of your commission for bringing in a deposit. Number eight, then because the way a lot of roofing companies do this, you may be required to be the project manager. So what does that mean? It means that you have to coordinate the construction date with the customer and the crew and the building supply joint. And it could be weeks before they can all be coordinated. Number nine, you order supplies and make sure that the delivery date is before the install date. Number 10, when the supplies are delivered, you might get another third of your commission. Step number 11, on the date of the install, as the project manager, you have to be there first thing in the morning to make sure that the crew shows up and has everything that they need. Then you have to babysit that job site until it's done. What happens if there are two vents short or they run out of flashing or felt or nails? You're driving to Home Depot or ABC Supply to get some more. Step number 12, the job goes smoothly. All the nails are picked up and nobody's kid will need a tetanus shot on this one. So what's next? You give the customer a certificate of completion and instruct them to send that to their insurance company. Hopefully it doesn't sit on their dining room table under a pile of other mail, purses, and book bags until the cleaning lady comes again. Number 13, wait for the insurance company to issue the final check. You'll be making a number of gentle reminder calls to the customer that they need to pay you what's owed. And number 14, if that all goes well, then your boss will pay you that last bit of your commission. You might make two or 3,000 bucks on that job on your commission, but you're gonna work for it. And not only that, you're gonna wait for it. It might be two months before you get paid and it could be a lot longer than that. So here on the other hand, sure, a cat IA will get paid a little bit less on the same size roof job, maybe. But there's only six steps and there's no doubt that when an IA completes that claim in a day or two, that that money will be in his or her checking account on the next payday, the whole amount. And even worst case scenario, if an IA averages only $200 take home per claim, he only has to close 500 claims in a year to hit $100,000. I tell you right now, a good IA can close six to nine claims in a day on a typical hailstorm. 
at six a day, that I will get up to 500 closed claims in about 80 or 90 actual days of work. A good IA can do that even in a slower year. So how many roofs does a guy have to sell to take home $100,000? If you're really good at selling roofs, you're probably not watching this video because you're busy. And as the roof salesman, you'll likely also do gutters and possibly siding and windows. But what if there's other damage to the inside of the house? What if the house is gone from fire or tornado? Are you canvassing that neighborhood? Probably not. If there's cat work available, it's likely that I'm there. As a salesperson, you can only go where your boss wants you to go. And if he decides it's not worth it to load up and go from Dallas to Fargo, then you're not going. But I'll be there and I'll be getting paid. So Julius Jones from YouTube, I'm certain that plenty of people who sell roofs can absolutely kill it and earn way more than an IA. But I tell you right now, most IAs get paid more than most roof salespeople. So while you guys are all belly aching about how all the adjusters aren't paying for starter and ridge, you might think to yourself, maybe I can do better as an IA. Hey Matt, how can I do what you do? Just a thought. Question of the day. How do you join the dark side and get started as an independent adjuster? Hop yourself on over to adjustertv.com and find out. If you got value from this video, you can help me create more videos just like this by subscribing to Adjuster TV on YouTube. Wondering what to watch next? There are tons more videos right here on the Adjuster TV YouTube channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great storm. Did you know and P.S. If you think I'm being hard on roofers, then you need to watch some of my earlier videos.